Good afternoon, and thank you for uh, tuning in. This morning I read something that I felt really telling. It was written by a woman named Laura Dodsworth. First they came for the truckers, and I did not speak out because I was not a trucker. Then they came for the donors to truckers, and I did not speak out because I was not a donor to truckers. Then they came for me, and there was no one left. to speak for me. <sighs> Yesterday I per personally witnessed a woman get trampled. Her name was Candace Cerro. She's alive, despite the rumors. However, Today, police are employing pepper spray against Canadians. So it's a dark day in our history. Never in my life would I believe anyone if they told me that our Prime Minister would refuse dialogue and choose violence against peaceful protesters. We're all in shock and we are currently organizing legal counsel and support for those injured by police brutality and for those being arrested Proud citizens demonstrating for their freedoms are now being apprehended for holding Canadian flags. They are being targeted for waving our glorious maple leaf. As, as we have seen, each time the government throws hurdles our way, it only strengthens Canadians' resolve. This demonstration has never been about COVID-19. It's been about the restrictions on personal autonomy that have been falsely justified for public safety. The infringement on our rights is now obvious and on full display in our nation's capital. Three of our organizers, Chris, Tamara, and Danny, have been arrested on petty counts of mischief and bank accounts of those who dared speak out have been frozen, including mine. All in Trudeau's desperate attempt to intimidate the opponents of his tyrannical regime. This is a grassroots movement and others will fill their roles. Others have already filled their roles. People want a hero to rally around. There is no single person who leads this freedom convoy. This is ordinary Canadians who are asserting their rights. I'm certainly not a hero. I'm simply... a father. I never thought I'd see the day when law enforcement officers would be arresting citizens for the crime of exercising their charter rights and freedoms to free assembly and free speech. It remains to be seen if Canadian democracy can survive such an abuse of power. There are hundreds of police on Parliament Hill. Many are here in riot gear holding military assault rifles. There are armored vehicles and police transport buses. For what? We have no answer to that question. When someone held up their arms to protect against a baton being swung at their head, the Ottawa police claimed that their weapon was being reached for. Now they are claiming that not a single protester was trampled. I saw it myself. I was 10 feet away. Minutes after Tamara Litch crouched down to be in a picture with a little girl while exchanging hugs and well wishes with fellow demonstrators, she was arrested for aiding and abetting mischief. The next day, Danny Beauford pleaded with his fellow police officers right here beside me. He stood here, right here, and pleaded with his fellow police officers. And he was immediately arrested within the hour. 
This is very reckless and it escalated and it is escalating. It's escalating our support. That's all it's escalating. It's painful. Is this a democracy? Is this Canada? Can you hear democracy, democracy's death now? It rings louder than the truckers' horns. The mainstream media has portrayed us as anti-government. I read that this morning on the mainstream media. Well, I've been pleading with the official Canadian government to talk and read our plan because the only plan that, that they have is violence. And the institution of a Chinese-style credit, social credit so score system, the, the entire federal government, the entire, all of the members of parliament at the federal level should be ashamed of themselves. They have failed us badly. But instead, they're going to give themselves a third pay raise throughout this pandemic while other people are gonna lose everything. We have always been a peaceful protest. There has never been violence in the three weeks that I have been here. <clears throat> Just peace, love, hugs, and singing, O Canada. The violence came to us when the police arrived. The police brought the violence. To that end, as a movement, we have chosen to peacefully withdraw from the streets of Ottawa. There is nothing to be gained by being brutalized by police. We will simply regroup as a grassroots mo movement. If the police can tame their insatiable need for violence and remove the barriers preventing us from actually leaving, we will peacefully withdraw starting today. The truckers will be initiating a charter challenge seeking to have the court strike down the unconstitutional vaccine mandates that discriminate against us all. I'm going to read this from a dear friend. I'm so disappointed on how the truckers peaceful protest for freedom has been met with violence by the police and the government. We call upon all Canadians to join us in a movement of silence and prayer. We pray for peace, freedom and openness from the government to engage in a healthy discussion. We want safety and freedom for all Canadians.